Hi everyone, this is Dr. Madhuri from Team MDS Conquer. I'm, I'm going to discuss about the wound healing in this video. So here I'm going to discuss about the wound healing and also the healing of the extraction wound and healing of the fractures also. If you see this wound is the discontinuity or break in the surface of the epithelium. Okay, if it will be simple, only the skin is involved and when it involves the underlying nerves and vessels and tendons, it is called as a complex wound. So, these are the list of types of wound, acute wound, chronic wound, the wound which is not healed in, even in the 4 weeks, it is called as a chronic wound. And the other classification includes like closed wounds and the open wounds. Closed wounds are contusion, abrasion and hematoma. Whereas open wounds includes incised wounds, lacerated, penetrating and the crushed wounds. So usually the healing will be taking place in two steps. That is regeneration and the repair. Regeneration occurs when healing takes place by the proliferation of parenchymal cells. Okay, and whereas repair, it is the replacement of the injured tissue by the fibrous tissue. And there are two processes which are involved in the repair here that is granulation tissue formation and the contraction of the wounds. If you take the granulation tissue formation, it takes place in three phases that is phase of inflammation, phase of clearance and phase of in phase of in growth of the granulation tissue. So, in phase of inflammation, after the trauma, blood clot will be seen at the site of injury. And the, there is acute inflammatory response within the 24 hours after the trauma at the site of the injury. So, this is the phase of inflammation. If you see the phase of clearance, uh, the combination of the proteolytic enzymes and the autolytic enzymes and the phagocytic activity of the macrophages, all these will combine and clear of the necrotic tissue, debris and the red blood cells which is seen in which is called as a phase of clearance. And in the last ingrowth of granulation tissue, it consists of two main processes. The first one is angiogenesis. Angiogenesis means a new vascularization that means the new blood vessels are formed. And this angiogenesis takes place under the influence of this following factors like vascular endothelial growth factor platelet derived growth factor, transforming growth factor, basic fibroblast growth factor and surface integrins. So if you take the next process that is called as fibrinogenesis. Okay, in this fibrinogenesis, the, the newly formed blood vessels are present in amorphous in the ground substance. Okay, then this fibroblast will have a combination of morphologic and functional characteristics of smooth muscle cells. And this collagen fibers will appear by the sixth day after the wound and then which finally form, formation takes place that is called as a cicatrization. I mean there will be more and more of collagen formation. Then coming to contraction of the wound, it starts after four days and completed by the 14th day after the wound. And during this period, the wound will be reduced approximately 80% of its original size and this contracted wound will result in a rapid healing so those are the steps you have to include in the phases of wound healing okay the th the, those three steps then coming to the wound healing can be maybe healing can be takes place by the first and the, and the second thing which you have to include are the ways by which the wound healing takes place okay the healing can be takes place by the primary union or a secondary union or a tertiary intention. It is also called as a delayed primary cold closure. So primary union can occur takes place when the wound is clean and unaffected, surgically incised wounds without much loss of cells and tissues and edges of the wounds are approximated by the sutures. Okay, again there are few sequences in this primary union or the primary union which takes place in the wound healing. Those sequence of events are like initially there will be hemorrhage, then acute inflammatory response, epithelial changes and organization of the wound. So hemor hemor initial hemorrhage includes immediately following the injury. Okay, Then acute inflammatory response within 24 hours. 
then there are the epithelial changes where a basal cell of epidermis from both the cut margins start proliferating in the this phase and a well approximated wound is covered by a layer of epithelium within 48 hours and by the fifth day multi-layered epithelium can be seen and the organization by the third day fibroblasts also invade the wound area and by the fifth day new collagen is formed and in the four weeks the scar tissue with the scanty cellular and vascular event elements are formed with a completely epithelized surface so those are the four phases which are take place in the primary union so if you take the secondary union this secondary union is taken takes place when the wound is infected when having extensive loss of cells and tissues and if the wound is not approximated by surgical sutures so and these are the sequences which takes place in the secondary union the initial three to three to four uh, phases are the same and the last thing is the wound contraction the presence of infection or extra when which you can see in the secondary union so all these things initial hemorrhage is same inflammatory phase is also the same then even the epithelial tissue cells will migrate in the form of epithelial spurs and until I it will a granulation tissue forms it does not cover surface fully okay the surface of the wound is not covered fully until a granulation tissue is formed so then the formation of granulation tissue here which is I mean which is a bulk of secondary healing is mainly because of this granulation tissue and the newly formed granulation tissue you can demarcate with a deep red uh, color which is granular and very fragile and wound contraction and this wound contracts to one third to one fourth of its uh, original size and if bacterial contamination of an open wound is there as it is uh, in the secondary union the wound edges are not uh, approximated with the suture or and which is which have a loss of more amount of epithelial cells the most uh, prominent chances of bacterial infection is there so if bacterial contamination of open wound is there then the, it will delay the process of healing so those are the steps which includes the secondary union okay then coming to the tertiary healing this tertiary healing is the secondary healing plus delayed the primary closure and this type of healing occurs following an injury or an operation when the tissue is excised and foreign material or an infection is present. So, this is the tertiary healing. So, those uh, we have done uh, regarding the phases of healing and uh, that is initial phase, uh, secondary phase and tertiary phase. Now, we will go with the factors affecting the own healing which includes the local factors and systemic factors. So, these are the list of local factors given here and these are the systemic factors which are given here which affects the own healing. And if you take the hey, age of the patient, the healing will be more slow in the aged people and the debilitated people. And if you take the nutrition also, if more debilitation, the wound healing will be delayed in hypoproteinemia, delay the appearance of fibroblast. If, if you take the vitamin C deficiency, if vitamin C deficiency actually C play, plays an important role in the collagen formation and wound healing. If the vitamin C deficiency is present, you can see the formation of unstable collagen which is degraded by collagenolysis. Hence, the wound healing is very delayed and the, it results in the capillary fragility also. Then even the vitamin E is also a membrane stabilizer. In vitamin A, it deficiency decreases the collagen synthesis. Zinc deficiency uh, also inhibit the healing whereas vitamin B6 deficiency also you can see the poor wound re repair and impairs the collagen cross-linking. Corticosteroids, if the patient is in corticosteroid, it depresses the growth of granulation tissue. Medicaments like warfarin and heparin decrease the formation of fibrin matrix. Okay, And the depressed general resistance, infection, shock and malignancy, all these things will decrease the wound healing. 
in even in the diabetes these are the three reasons why there is a decreased wound healing in the diabetes because of increased susceptibility infections hyperglycemia release uh, results in the decreased activity of phagocytes and even the insulin is required in the earlier stages of the collagen formation so these are the three things where you can see why why a wound healing is delayed in the diabetic people then other few genetic disorders coagulation disorders and smoking also uh, will cause the delay in wound healing so those are the reasons you have to write those are factors like local and systemic factors you have to mention in your exam then complications of the wound healing include infection epidermal cyst pigmentation seroma which is a collection of fluid with lymph or blood and hematoma okay these are the uh, complications of the wound healing and other complications include like scar formation incisional hernia neoplasia keloid this keloid is important and mostly seen in the african and asian population and this is like a excessive painful and ugly scar formation this is because of the excessive formation of the collagen material then coming to the hypertrophic scar this here the borders are confined to the initial wound and the non hyaluronic collagen fibers and fibroblasts are seen in this thing then excessive contraction proud flesh wound dehiscence so those are the complications of the wound healing if now we will come the he to the healing of the extraction wound this after the extraction immediately blood fills the socket which coagulates and ends of torn blood vessels in the periodontal ligament then within the first because this is this can be divided into the stages that those are the sequence which happen immediately after the extraction now we'll see after 24 hours alteration in the vascular blood vasodilation occurs mobilization of the leukocytes surface of the clot covered by thick fibrin and finally the clot retraction then first in the first week of the wound clot is replaced by the granulation tissue and allular bone shows the osteoclastic activity and edges of the wound continue to exhibit the pro epithelial proliferation in the second week clot continues to organize uh, fibrin meshwork is formed neoangiogenesis tuber uh, trabecular fossa enter the socket osteoclastic resorption and the remnants of pdl undergo degeneration in the third week mature granulation tissue is seen trabecular fossa form around the wound and crest of allular bone is rounded by osteoclastic resorption in the fourth week it is a final stage of healing where the remodeling of the bone is seen and the radiographic evidence of bone formation does not become prominent that means it will become prominent only after the 6th or 8th week of the tooth extraction so if the tooth extraction on healing of tooth extraction is given you have to write like immediately what is with what happens in the sockets immediately after the 24 hours first week second week third week and the fourth week okay then these are the complications of the extraction wound that is dry socket and the fibrous union then coming to the healing of bone it can be healed by the indirect healing or secondary healing or direct healing or the primary healing so these are the primary intention healing which there are two types of healing that is gap healing and the contact healing and uh, here the uh, gap healing this is small gap between the fractured bony fragments is seen whereas in areas with interfragmentary gap is zero we can expect the contact healing so you can note all these differences between this gap healing and the contact healing which is given in this slide then this is because in the secondary intention first there will be hematoma formation callus formation bony this is fibrous callus bony callus and the bone remodeling these are the steps in the secondary intention of the bone healing then complications of the fracture healing include fibrous union non union and the delayed union so those are the those are the things you have to write for the bone healing fracture heal bone healing or the fracture healing uh, nowadays we are using lasers so we'll see the lasers in the own healing so these can can be written uh, you can write in the uh, applied aspects so lasers will employ employ the low level radiant energy and it will i mean 
this majority of the laser wound healing has focused on the prolif proliferative phase in the literature and this low level radiant energy of laser will accelerate the wound healing reduces the pain and the enhances the neural regeneration so these are the important points you have to write in the lasers in wound healing and the wound care should be taken like you have to provide a nutritional support and monitor the nutritional sub status and create maintain a clean moist wound environment with adequate circulation and oxygenation and you have to know about few points about the hyperbaric oxygen therapy also here the 100% oxygen it will be given at 2 to 2.4 atmospheres for 1 to 2 hours so these are the applied aspects you can write like lasers and wound care and hyperbox, hyperbaric oxygen therapy and advances in the wound care we are using the growth factors so this is the list of exogenous application of growth factor directly on the wound you can you wrote this point because these are the advancements and this is the delivery system that can be used to deliver the growth factors like we can give topically or a fibrin sealant or a glue use of a platelet rich plasma and tissue engineered equivalents so that's it so if a wound healing answers answer has come you have to write all the uh, healing of wound phases then the complications of wound healing then the extraction socket healing then the fracture healing uh, finally a few applied aspects like lasers and the advances uh, in the wound healing that we wound care that we are using now growth factors directly on the wound so these are the re references which are included in this video for the wound healing thank you have a great day